I didn't feel like I knew enough to make a video like this. I didn't feel like I had the authority or the the moral place to say anything. I've got a really small platform. No one's really here yet to listen to me. But there's certain things that need to be said, especially from the UK side of the Black Lives Matter movement that I just need to say something about. Now, there's been certain instances since this all kicked off with it happening at the same time as the coronavirus um, that have led me to make this video. And it's infuriated me to a point where it's actually hard to get words out that aren't just immediate reactions to a response that makes me angry. This is what needs to be reined in when we're trying to discuss our points. We need to take in the information we're getting, the response to either privilege, disregard, or anything in particular that would go against the Black Lives Matter movement. We need to listen to it. We need to formulate our points and then we need to say something that makes sense back because it would be so easy for me to make this video, to lash back at the comments that have made me make this video in the first place. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. One of the big reasons I'm sat here in this chair now is because I didn't feel like I knew enough about UK black history. And that is a major, major problem because it was never taught to me in school. Uh, all we got was Black History Month. We have that singular month where we learn about individual character profiles like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, who are amazing for the civil rights movement, but that doesn't tell anything about the UK side of the story. Uh, it isolates them to certain caricatures of only separate people where we do not see the overall collective thoughts, feelings and history of black people going back as far as you can think. So I want to use this video for a couple of things. One, to educate a little bit more on a couple of things that stand out from UK black history and just bring to the surface a few points that it doesn't make sense in 2020 that I still have to research certain places in Europe where I can go and it will be safe. Places in Italy, Russia, whichever, especially as a mixed, a mixed individual. If I went to certain parts of Russia, I could be considered even worse than a black person. And it's, it's not about what shade you are anymore. We are all lumped in together, whether it be me being stopped and searched by police officers in the past, just happened because I look like a suspect. Um, whether it be any time you do have like confrontation with the police and your heart starts racing more than you could ever think about, which certain individuals could never understand. Um, whether it be security guards following you round shops because they just suspect you naturally or little old ladies that look at you and they get frightened for no apparent reason, whether it be because of what you're wearing or just your general stature and that, that fear that the media has produced around black men and black women. It's, it's everything. And there's just so many things that need to be said. And I'm extremely frustrated with the current situation now because there's people that almost have the sentiment of, you've made your point, can you go back inside? Uh, I want lockdown to end. Well, there's been a much worse virus in this world and that virus is the fact that people think you can just shoot and violently pin down and choke that choke out people of a different color than you because you think they're scary you think they're more prone to violence that is the real issue here that's been happening for over 400 years of colonial oppression and every time all we get is a hashtag for a couple of weeks and it disappears it's time for it to stop and we will not stop for certain reasons but before i get too heated I just want to point out a few things that you may not know about UK black history. So let's get into a few of them. Now, a big thing that's often said over here is that racism isn't that bad here. Um, it very much exists. It's systemic. It's class based. Uh, and it's very much hidden under the rug, which we will not see. Don't forget, we are the inventors of American racism uh, since we kind of gave it to them and we built the slave trade off the back of taking... Uh, Africans from Africa and moving them over to the West Indies and Jamaica and then making them farm the plantations and taking that money and using that profit to put into the British Empire. So don't think we don't know a thing or two about racism. We invented it. But 
that is not pointed out whenever you teach it in history. I was never told about any of this in school. I had to do my own independent research and learn from my elders about what has actually happened. Fact is, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we only ever learn about the American Civil Rights Movement, and that's time to change. So in school, I was taught nothing about important moments in UK black history, like the, the Abolition Act of 1833. I had to research that myself. I was told nothing about the over 4 million non-white UK soldiers that fought in World War I, and neither did we see anything from it in terms of classroom imagery, media, and even when you search it yourself, the general media you find, you cannot find very much evidence of this at all. Nor was I told about a certain story after World War I, 1919, the race riots. The white community ended up blaming the black community for part of the economic downturn after World War I. This all culminated in the lynching of Charles Wotton in the streets of Liverpool in 1919. Before that even happened and before he was lynched, the white community across the UK decided to push back and it ended up meaning that black individuals were being fired from their jobs and whites were refused to work alongside them and this was just in 1919. This is not long ago. It's so easy to use us as a scapegoat because we look so different and we we come from another place which you took us from and then blame us for taking your resources and being a downturn on your economy. That stigmatism still sticks around, that tribal fear of the different, the the tall, black, scary individual that is made up in the minds of the media, the stigmatism of scary, different, black, dangerous individuals still hangs around today uh, as a thought in the back of people's minds, no matter how old they are, because of media manipulation. But as you know, the winners of history get to write history so you wouldn't know much of this this information would be suppressed like little known facts after the abolition act of 1833 there was a scheme called apprenticeship where those former slaves that thought they finally had freedom had to work for the next four to six years 45 hours a week for their masters as reparations for what they'd lost in property and not only that the government also gave the slave owners 20 million in total uh, to compensate for their loss of human property. And do you know how much that calculates as, as today's currency? Around 17 billion. 17 billion for the loss of human property. In the UK, they've done a brilliant job of blinding us to the real narrative. They've got this idea that the UK is so far ahead of the curve and that we've completely eradicated slavery and racism uh, we did it the first time we did it way before anyone else in 1883 yes the chains are off but we have never truly been viewed as the same as everyone else and it's extremely clear from what we can see going on across the world that this has gone on long enough the vicious stereotypes around black men and women and fatherless households the constant fear of being stopped by the police at any time and being killed hurt or arrested in your life being over for something you didn't even do. Being turned down for a job or not even considered because of a cultural name. Being told in schools or workplaces that when we have our hair in afros, cane rows and uh, any type of style that matches our natural hair, that we have to get rid of it because it's not professional, that it doesn't match the white standard. We even see it throughout business in Parliament, the lack of black CEOs and the lack of black representation in Parliament, the House of Lords, even just being followed by shop staff and security guards. It all culminates in such a horrible feeling of different differentiation and you're just not belonging. So when we hear people oppose the Black Lives Matter movement and protests with their lives being inconvenienced or all lives matter, those horrible feelings of the fact that people still have an argument here that I have to research where I can travel anywhere in the world just in case it's not accepting the people that look like me. The fact that I haven't even gone on holiday to America yet even though my hobbies and interests are mostly American because I am terrified of what might happen to me if I went over there. The subconscious prejudices and side comments we get all the time from white people thinking they're trying to relate to us 
In one of my workplaces, they must have thought I was Indian, so they used to put Asian radio on for me whenever I used to go in the bathroom, because they thought that might make me feel better. Or whenever they'd go to shake my hand, they wouldn't hold out like this, they'd hold out like this, like I want to dap them up because I'm black and that's what we do instead. We're sick and tired of seeing, uh, whenever we bring up points like this and how we want true equality, societally speaking, about how we're seen and how we're talked to and how we're thought of, that the crime rates are brought up as a means to defend their behaviour and their thoughts, when the statistics on it are just completely skewed and always used in their favour. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're not going to roll over anymore and let more innocent black people die and just become a hashtag. Or even if they were criminals per se and the police were tracking them down, then deal with them humanely and don't stand on their neck for seven minutes until they die screaming in front of everyone. We are done being treated like second class citizens and we are done all for the reason that we have a level of pigmentation in our skin that you do not and certain different features. And we're so sorry if our protests interfere with your delicate schedules and businesses. I'm sorry, but this has gone on long enough for hundreds of years, generations on generations, and you think we're just going to stop now on what has now become the world's biggest Black Lives Matter and racial civil rights movement that has ever existed. We are not going to stop. The UK stands with the US completely and many other countries across the world are still doing so and doing their part. Now we're not going to stop until we hear empty words from a leader. I want to see true legislative change in every aspect of life. Now, there's a diagram to my right here that essentially shows you the four points of racism. The four pillars are institutional, interpersonal, internalised and structural. Once we see four changes, major changes in each sector of that, the Black Lives Matter movement will continue to go strong. I want to see major changes in the political system, how we are represented, the kind of stigmatism about us in the media. I also want to see major changes in the education system. We do not just want to be renegated to a single month where you tell only these interpersonal biographies of US civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. We need more than that. We need the collective history, especially on the UK history. Tell us more about the Abolition Act and what really happened afterwards. Tell us about the successes that the UK black community has had throughout the years, not just celebrate the white saviours. And we won't stop until everyone sees the truth, when everyone's not blinded by their own privilege and think that this is just an inconvenience and that nothing will change via protests. Every civil right movement starts via protest and will continue to until real change is made and we are heard. We are one human race and it's about time we started to remove the stigmatisms and general stereotypes attached to colours and creeds across the world. Obviously I feel very passionate about this but I also understand that from my perspective my mum's white and my dad is black. So I know racism is not built in. You're not born racist. I mean, the stories my dad used to tell me from growing up in the 80s is ridiculous. The fact that if I was around, from a mixed person's perspective, I might not be taken by either the white or black side and just renegated by myself because I'm different. People with those ideologies, stigmatisms, are still around. They think we are more prone to violence. They think we are only good at rapping and basketball. They are everywhere. Personally, I'm sick of being the only black guy or person of colour in my office wherever I go. I'm one of one or only other one throughout my whole two to three year career in marketing. So that's why I implore everyone, like I've gone on my own personal education journey, I'd love for you to as well. What I've done is, is I've linked lots of really informative videos uh, from everyone from The Guardian to A Colour and really good books to help educate on UK black history and black history at large. But I want to say thank you for everyone for sticking around. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. I know this is a bit more of a rant video. I'm not going to put any branding on this or anything like that. This is purely just to put my thoughts out there and hope the small platform I've developed can go that little bit further and help out to develop in the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.